The course of my life changed in the fourth grade when I began to play the clarinet. Playing music, it gave me an appreciation for art and it brought beauty to my life, sure. But more than that, it taught me about the fundamental human necessity to build relationships of support, of interconnectedness and community. That success is it's best built collectively rather than individually and failing together may build communities that are more persistent and lift each other up in the future. I'll take a few steps back. Since I was young, I have wrestled with sometimes debilitating anxiety. The kind that when put in an intense or stressful situation makes my ears feel like they're stuffed with cotton. My fingers lose feeling and I need to throw up. One summer, I was probably six or seven, my parents signed me up for summer swim league. I was good, I'm tall, lanky, I would win all my races, but it was torture. I would stand at the starting block, tears streaming down my face, my ears ringing under the swim cap. I'd dive into the water on the whistle and I'd swim the prescribed meters and people wildly cheered, go Jess, go Jess. My mind was a cloudy haze. As my competitors and I popped out the other side, it was now not uncommon that tears and snot were streaming down my face. And I hated it. The people, the noise, the crowd. I know, I know, the cheering, it was for me. But something about it felt lonely. So at age eight, when I walked into Miss Owens's resource closet, which was the only space they gave her for instrumental music, there was something different about this activity. In this tiny corner of the school, tucked amongst the unused books and the extra supplies, there were no cheering fans. As a class, we learned to play music together and the anxiety always seemed to dissipate. We learned the physicality of playing an instrument. Miss Owens reminded us week after week, bottom at the edge of the chair, sitting up nice and tall, feet firmly planted on the floor, big belly breath. <sighs> we learned to read notes and rhythms, noodled our way up and down the instrument to create strands of colors and tones. If one musician breathed too early, our initial notes fell out of sync. If one student's fingers lagged, landed on the key too quickly or maybe lagged behind, the music, it sounded sloppy. Each person's responsibility was to match the student next to them. Unlike swimming, where I was always trying to stay ahead of my competitors, Playing music, it required me to be precise and in sync with the person to the left and to the right. Our success depended on the interconnectedness of the group, staying in lockstep with one another. As we added to our repertoire of notes, of rhythms, techniques, our music became complex. At first, we started with pieces like Hot Cross Buns, you know, pieces in unison where we, we, we all played the notes together. And then we moved on to canons, pieces like Frere Jaca or Row, Row, Row Your Boat, where we, the class would split and we had to play groups of different notes simultaneously. The more complicated the music, the more we leaned on each other, opened our ears to listen and followed the conductor, who was charged with leading all of the musicians to play as one. I remember one of my first ensemble pieces, Sabre Dance, by composer Aram Kachaturian. We worked on articulation, using our tongues to stop and start the notes. We matched dynamics. We ensured we got louder together and softer at the same rate. That we worked as one unit to convey one unified story. Even our bodies had to move together. Quietly, we would tap our big toe in our shoe to keep a pulse or move forward and back with the phrasing of the music. Playing in this ensemble made me a better clarinetist and getting better at clarinet made me a more confident human. As a young musician, there's no better place to practice these tools than in a youth orchestra. And in high school, I successfully auditioned into the top one in my area. At the beginning of each school year, before the first rehearsal, the all too familiar anxiety butterflies would take flight in my stomach. And like clockwork, they would subside once I was sitting amongst my musician friends ready to play the first notes. Within the microcosm of the larger orchestra you see, there are smaller families of musicians, your neighbors around you to rely on. 
The woodwind family includes the flutes and the oboes and the English horns. The bassoons and the clarinets was where I made my home. The intricate harmonies and difficult rhythms made it essential to cultivate trust and reliance in our family. Each person separately must study their part in detail in order to contribute the same level of enthusiasm and accountability to this communal endeavor. We learn to compromise, one musician bending their note toward the other to match pitch and find agreement. Take, for example, Antonin Dvorak's New World Symphony, one of my favorites. In the second movement, the tempo slows, and when our section was truly functioning as a unit, I could always picture the boat played by the English horn rocking back and forth on a calm nighttime sea that was played by the rest of the Woodwind family. While each part is independently unique, the piece could not function nor be as beautiful if we worked independently. Rather, it is only when each of us relies on each other and tru is truly interdependent that the magic happens. I built a toolbox for my life for coping with anxieties and fears by playing music with others. I grew as an individual, I built confidence and a strong sense of self when I knew that I was far from alone. My personal growth was dependent upon connections to others, a musician to a talented teacher and a teacher to an orchestra. As the program director at Play On Philly, I worked to create these same spaces and opportunities for students in underserved communities to learn to play instruments and grow their own sense of self, their own proverbial toolbox for their lives. One not so secret ingredient to this success is the musical community we work to build. Except now I'm the teacher echoing the familiar trope, sit up straight, bottom at the edge of the chair, breathe together. Many of our young musicians begin playing instruments when they are six years old. Five days per week, two hours a day, pop students, they learn in group and build, groups and build a musical family of supportive teachers, fellow classmates, and family members who share in the successes and hardships of the young musician's journey. The students learn from the beginning that they are responsible for each other. In the beginning violin class, students pair up as bow drivers. One young girl holds her violin over her left shoulder straight like a tabletop while the other pulls the bow across the string to ensure that it remains straight. Often, pop students at varying levels learn and play together. It becomes the responsibility of the more senior musician to teach his less experienced colleague, even if he is just six months ahead. As you might imagine right now, Play on Philly students are making a lot of music over Zoom. A typical orchestra requires being in the company of others, leaning in closely to hear if two notes are clashing in dissonance, and taking that big breath together and letting it go at the same time. We've gotten creative about how to teach and make music that keeps connections and community building at the center. In fact, when we ventured online last spring, this past spring, we asked students and parents, teachers and staff to contribute their ideas to the reimagination process. Just like Dvorak's New World Symphony, it took each person's contribution to finish the masterpiece. We continue the work of skill building and providing students space to form their identity and sharpen their emotional tools. Young musicians are creating class compositions and using virtual platforms to learn note reading and musicianship. This summer, a special group of young middle and high school students, pop students, gathered virtually to listen to a piece of music that they had practiced and recorded very much apart, but which we were able to stitch together to appear as though as if they had played it together. Since the first grade, these string players had gathered for over 500 hours each year to practice and make music together. Just like little me, they had worked in community to hone their skills, starting with hot cross buns, progressing to a minuet, finally a full symphony orchestra piece. And now, from our separate homes in different corners of Philadelphia, we listened to these students as they played Carlos Simon's Elegy. We listened as string instruments weaved themselves into the texture to create these gradual crescendos of sound. 
We watched as students moved their bodies to shape phrases, and as the piece ended, we felt the gradual release of bows from strings as the sound dissipated into silence. Our eyes once again met on the screen to reveal smiles and tears. Musically speaking, the skills these young musicians had cultivated as a group over many years transcended the obstacles of being in each other's presence. What they had learned as a team, how to compromise, follow, lead, empathize with one another, they could now apply independently of one another. This moment reminded us all that while we might have felt alone or worried or anxious or scared or some combination of everything, that we aren't alone. These young people have what they need to face obstacles in the future, musically or otherwise. So that's what this clarinet brought to this shy, anxious child. Making music with others in this, is this unique opportunity to connect with many individuals with ideas and perspectives and ways of being. Well-played music, it insists on compromise, on sharing, on leaning on each other in times of need. When we must work together to get to the finish line, Rather than racing to be first, we develop empathy and realize that our self-worth can be expression, an expression of the goodness of the community as a whole. In turn, we develop skills that become important for the success of our own lives. Imagine if all the children in Philadelphia were equipped with the skills and tools they needed to cope with the challenges they face, and in turn, the adults they grew up to be did as well all because they had studied music in community with others. Now, that's when real beauty of music is made. <laughs>